So we now know that glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure and the glomerular capillary colloid osmotic pressure directly regulate the glomerular filtration rate. In this lesson, we'll focus on how afferent and efferent arterial resistance regulate glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure and colloid osmotic pressure. Let's begin with the basics. Blood enters the afferent arterioles at a pressure of about 100 millimeters of mercury. If it were to enter the glomerular capillaries at this pressure, it would cause severe damage over time. To avoid that, the afferent arteriole applies resistance, which reduces the pressure to about 50 millimeters of mercury as it enters the glomerular capillary. But as plasma flows along the glomerular capillary, fluid is being filtered. This causes the hydrostatic pressure to decrease along the length of the glomerular capillary. To avoid the decrease, the efferent arteriole applies resistance, which helps maintain the glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure at about 50 millimeters of mercury, which typically yields a GFR of about 125 milliliters per minute. Let's now see what happens to glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure and GFR when afferent resistance is changed while efferent resistance is kept constant. So as we just said, a typical afferent arterial resistance is equal to a hydrostatic pressure of about 50 millimeters of mercury. Now, as afferent resistance is decreased, hydrostatic pressure increases. And as the afferent resistance is increased, hydrostatic pressure decreases. This makes sense because the afferent arterial is upstream of the glomerular capillary. It also makes sense that GFR would follow the changes in hydrostatic pressure, and it does. Let's now examine what happens to GFR when efferent resistance is changed while afferent resistance is kept constant. So again, a typical efferent resistance is equal to a hydrostatic pressure of about 50 millimeters of mercury. Now, as efferent resistance is decreased, hydrostatic pressure decreases. And as efferent resistance is increased, hydrostatic pressure increases. This too makes sense because the efferent arterial is downstream of the glomerular capillary. So with this in mind, it might make sense that GFR would follow the changes in hydrostatic pressure. However, this does not occur as you might expect. So as hydrostatic pressure is increased, GFR does initially increase but it plateaus, and after which it decreases. Now the plateau and decrease in GFR are referred to as the paradoxical effect because it contradicts the rules. We can explain the paradoxical effect using this graph, which shows the relationship between hydrostatic pressure and colloid osmotic pressure, as well as GFR. Now increases in efferent resistance lead to increased glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure, which would lead to an increase in GFR. However, at mid to high efferent resistance, it results in decreased GFR, which can only be explained by an increase in glomerular capillary colloid osmotic pressure. Now the increases in colloid osmotic pressure are due to increases in plasma proteins, which are due to an increase in the loss of fluid during filtration. And this increased loss of fluid is primarily due to the reduction in renal plasma flow. Now under normal physiological conditions, the renal plasma flow is about 600 milliliters per minute, while the GFR is about 125 milliliters per minute. Now increases in renal plasma flow lead to increased GFR, but only slightly while decreases in renal plasma flow lead to a dramatic decrease in GFR. Now, even though GFR is decreased at lower rates of renal plasma flow, something interesting happens. A larger fraction of the fluid is filtered because as fluid moves more slowly across the glomerular capillary, it has more time to filter. For example, at a typical renal plasma flow of 600 milliliters per minute, the filtration fraction is about 20%. Now, increases in renal plasma flow result in a decreased filtration fraction, but only slightly. However, 
decreases in renal plasma flow lead to a larger filtration fraction. In fact, at very low renal plasma flows, the filtration fraction reaches a maximum of about 40%. So, the paradoxical effect is due to a reduction in renal plasma flow, which leads to an increase in the filtration fraction, which results in the increase in glomerular capillary colloid osmotic pressure, which in turn counters the effects of the increased hydrostatic pressure.